Alright, so I want to talk about character creation today. I've spent years and years on creating characters. This is my character Maya. She's my oldest character actually. I have been working on her since at least 2012 if not longer, but she's my oldest character in creation. Now this is something I drew today and there is a lot of steps that I have done before this and as I said this took me a long time. If you create a character it's gonna take you time to develop it how you want it to be. Creating a character doesn't just mean creating a look, it means creating their entire personality and for that you have to make the look fit the personality. But first of all let's go into how to come up with a character. If you are interested in creating a character then you should already have an idea into why you want to create a character. So maybe you already have a story and you want to put that character in your story. So if you already have a story, you already should have a little bit of an idea how your character is or maybe even how the character kind of looks like. So it's a little bit easier to start from there. If however you do not know anything about the character or even if the character is just someone coming up in your story once, you still have to have it a little bit more logic so the character needs to have a little bit information like a look something you can redraw a few times depending on how much she's gonna come back on your story and a name etc think of your characters as actors a lot of times in movies um, i never made a movie so i'm not sure about this but a lot of times in movies they will have their basic story and then they will cast people and once they see the actors they might change a lot of things in the movie because it will fit the character more. If they like an actor, they might change the story fitting the actor. Now imagine you have a story and you create this character, then the character doesn't fit your story at all. What do you do? You do you scrap the character? Maybe you adjust the story or maybe you adjust the character to make it fit your story. Whatever your decision in that case will be, you still need a character. So I'm going to show you how I create my characters. First of all, this is a sketch pad. I bought a really cheap one, thin paper, it doesn't really matter because I'm having this in my backpack at all times. I have the sketch pad and an eraser plus a pencil at all times on me. So whenever I see something on the street or whatever, wherever I am and I see something that interests me and inspires me, I'll draw it. This sketchpad is really new, so there's not a lot in here to show, but this is the first thing I drew. This was a few days ago. Uh, first time I used it, I drew a random guy that walked past me, and I thought he looked really cool, so I tried to draw him. Now, this has a few problems in it. First of all, I liked everything about him. I liked the hairstyle, I liked the clothes, but I couldn't keep it in my head. So now you see what comes out of this. I only have hands kind of and the top of his head is just not a lot here. If you're brave enough to go up to someone on the street and ask them for a picture, you tell them that you're writing a story and that they inspire you for your character and you'd like to take a picture of them if that would be okay and they say yes and you're brave enough to ask them in the first place then go for it. I'm definitely way too awkward for that so I'm not I, I can't do that, but that would be the ideal thing to do. Also, disclaimer, uh, I drew this in night. It was nighttime, there was no light, and half of it was drawn while walking, and the other half was drawn on top of a car, so... This is gonna be a page of random stuff that I see, not just full on people. I drew a shoe here that I liked. If you see a shoe in a shoe store or any store at all and you see something that you like and you would like to draw it, first of all you have to, maybe not immediately in your original sketch, but afterwards you have to alternate a little bit so that it's not exactly the same shoe. and. Do not take a picture of it in the store. The store will definitely not appreciate you taking a picture of their shoes. This is not the only way I get into characters because otherwise I would not have any. Because you can see how hard it is to do it this way. There's actually a much easier way to do it. So a lot of times I will actually go on Pinterest and I will look for just things. You know, like Pinterest picks out things that you might like. I have to say a disclaimer for Pinterest, if you do see a funny picture in the corner, just don't click on it because you will get screwed over with it. You will have this on your dashboard forever, it's gonna get burned into it. If you want to keep your Pinterest strictly work related, if you want to say that, and create characters from it and all that, then I would restrain from clicking on funny pictures or anything that has anything else to do than what you actually want to. I'm saying this from my own experience and it's it's 
it takes up a lot of time because you get distracted by funny pictures and then it's just it's all it's a thing and it's just not fun okay just if you've never used Pinterest before basically this is how it works you click on a picture that you like as I said click on pictures you actually do like otherwise you're gonna be screwed and you can look at the picture a little more and you can also scroll down and see pictures that are more related to the picture you just saw clicking on that picture will give the algorithm an idea that you like this picture and want to see more of it especially if you go into the picture go underneath it and click on another picture there then it will think oh my god you really likes this kind of stuff I clicked on a random thing just now and I'm probably gonna get screwed over by it as I said there's a bunch of things if you it, one time you click a funny picture you'll always have these if you're not interested in them anymore and you thought, oh damn, what did I do? I made a mistake. You can hide it or say I'm not into this pen, whatever. There's always a way to get rid of it. I highly recommend if you want to create a character that you get inspired by actual people and not by something like if you want to draw manga, then don't get inspired by other manga. You need to look at real people to be able to understand how people work. Then there's also these um, posts for 13 year old girls that help me with my character designing for their clothing. Okay, so now that you wasted 15 minutes of your life while getting distracted by funny pictures again, you can finally start working on stuff. So I found a picture, I already looked at this one, I don't know why it recommends you pins that you already looked at, which is kind of stupid, but whatever. Uh, let's say I'm interested in this, then I can just click here and save it to whatever board I needed. You have to create a board if you want to pin something to a board. Pinterest will tell you what to do. I don't need to do a tutorial on how to use Pinterest here, okay? The only thing I could say about this piece that I would be finding interesting would be kind of the hair. So what you do is you take out your sketchbook and you start drawing the hair. If I'm interested in something, it's mostly one part of the picture which I then draw out on my sketchbook and this is an example of what that will look like you just got a bunch of things like these pants and this outfit and stuff like that why do I not just use Google or any other platform is because Pinterest does take out all sorts of pictures that you can just pin something onto Pinterest from any website and people do that so you can find all sorts of stuff that you cannot really find on Google so Pinterest in that case is better than Google in my opinion I would have to sift through so much stuff on Google and put in keywords you know I don't really know what I'm looking for Google please help me that's not gonna show me anything I need to see but Pinterest is a little bit smarter in that way even though it does show you funny cat pictures all the time so let's say I'm interested in these hair if it's hair I'm probably gonna draw a head first the sketch doesn't need to be pretty and perfect it just has to have the information on there which is why we're also drawing the eyes even though one might argue if that's really necessary but we want to know where the fringe starts where it ends and everything like that So now that you have your character and you know that you can draw her face twice, looking kind of the same, then you need a name. First I put all the names on my piece of paper here in my sketch pad and then I transferred them into my book. So now they're all alphabetically in order with their genders next to it so I know if it's for a girl or a boy or maybe you can use it for both genders. If you're not really sure about that you can just google it. Most of the names I got from websites like baby names and whatnot and other names you just get from TV. You hear a name, oh this is really an interesting name, I like to use that maybe. Now obviously the name is really important. So so if you see a character, you have to choose a name that will fit the character. So this is Caleb. Caleb was previously Kuzame. Changing his name into an English name was a little bit harder for me than all the other names because I didn't really quite feel like any name will really fit him. In the end, I thought Caleb was a nice name and that it fit him, so I used Caleb. Caleb with a K, not with a C. Alright, so now let's say you have your character. You made sure you can draw them as many times as possible you really need to in any kind of angle and they will still look pretty much the same. The character sheet is something I came up with a few months ago. I'm sure some other people have done it but this is how I did it. I basically make a sketch of the character so you can really see them from the front, you know, so you have the information really nicely. And then you can go from there and do some different things. This is the same character over the span of different times. It's the first one I made ever and then this was the second one. 
from this character. Like different clothing, different shoes, etc. This is like old stuff, so it's not really relevant anymore, but I haven't done one in a while, so this is basically what you're looking for. If you're really happy with your character, then you can start making these sheets. You can make these sheets when you're not really happy with your character, as long as you're okay with remaking the sheet all over again once you're happy with how your character turns out. Of course, if you do it digitally, it's gonna be a little bit easier. However, I do want to say that if you're not able to make your character look the same twice, then try not erasing as much when you try to make them, when you try to draw them again. By erasing and fixing little portions, you're actually not really learning too much. I'm not saying don't erase at all, but don't erase too much. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck in this spiral of just messing it up, erasing little parts, tweaking it until it kind of looks the same, but not actually being able to draw the character again. So try when you don't get the character to look right, try and redraw it completely over again. Creating a character can take forever and you have to be prepared for that because it's not just gonna be like okay now I have a character this is gonna be the final version of it. You're probably gonna have to come back to it and change a lot of things especially if it's your main character. Here's a small example of how a character can change over the time. This is the exact same character. This is the same character. It's not twins. It's this, you know, you get what I mean, like this is the same character and this is also her but a few years ago, I think this was like probably 2015, there's no date on here, but it was probably 2015 and this is 2017, the end of 2017, so you can see how much the character and the style have changed. Alright, so I think that's all you need to know about creating your characters. It's actually not as hard as it looks like, but if you really don't know where to start and how to do it, then it's gonna be a lot harder. So I hope this helps you a little bit. Before I end the video, I just want to say something about last week's video. Uh, some people didn't understand what I meant because I said I don't really watch anime or read manga and that I was still drawing manga. That didn't really make any sense and I totally agree. And it's not like I... I think someone asked me if if I don't like manga, why do I draw it? Not in a mean way, they were just wondering. And it's a valid question, I mean, yeah, why am I drawing manga if I don't... It's not that I don't like it, that's the point where I'm trying to get at. It's not that I don't like it, I'm just not as into it as I used to be. I used to be a huge fan. It's not like I have boxes and boxes of manga or I've watched thousands of anime, but now as you can tell, I changed my style quite a bit. And I'm not saying that I don't like manga anymore, I just want to clear that out. I, it doesn't mean that I'm not that I that I hate the whole thing or anything. Uh, it's basically just I'm not as into it as I used to be, and I am changing my style in response to that. I don't want to follow anything specific, and I think the only thing I could describe it as is a comic because I think comic has such a wide range of freedom in it. Not saying manga is like this tiny little box that you have to fill in and you can't go outside of it, but it is basically this and this. You know, manga most of all is Japanese and already I failed at that, so I think calling it manga is kind of ridiculous. So I'm not gonna call it a manga anymore just because it's not Japanese. But for now, I'm going to call it a comic. With that, I think I have said enough and I'm gonna leave you to your weekend now. I hope you have a great one and I'll see you next week. Bye.